I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 395. February 15th, 1935. A visit for a few days to my family home to see my dying mother. When I learned that my mother was seriously ill and near death, and that she had asked that I come home, as she wanted to see me once more before dying, a host of emotions were awakened in my heart. As a child who sincerely loves its mother, I wanted very much to fulfill her wish, but I left this to God and resigned myself completely to His will. Paying no heed to the ache in my heart, I followed God's will. On the morning of my name day, February 15th, Mother Superior gave me a second letter from my family and granted me permission to go to my parents' home to fulfill the wish and request of my dying mother. I began at once to make the necessary preparations for the journey and left Vilnius in the evening. I offered the whole night for my seriously ill mother that God might grant her the grace of losing none of the merits of her suffering. My traveling companions were very kind. Several women of the Sodality of Mary were in the same compartment with me. I sensed that one of them was suffering greatly and fighting a difficult battle in her soul. I began to pray in spirit for this soul. At eleven o'clock these women went to another compartment for a chat, leaving only the two of us behind in the carriage. I could feel that my prayer was causing this soul's struggle to become even fiercer. I did not console her, but prayed all the more fervently. Finally, the lady turned to me and asked if she was obliged to fulfill a certain promise which she had made to God. At that moment, I received inner knowledge of the promise and replied, You are absolutely obliged to keep it, or else you will be miserable for the rest of your life. This thought will pursue you everywhere and give you no peace. Surprised at my answer, she opened her soul to me. She was a school teacher. When she was about to take her examinations, she had promised God that if she did well in her examinations, she would devote herself to his service, that is, enter a religious congregation. She passed the examinations very well. But, she said, when I entered into the hustle and bustle of the world, I no longer wanted to enter a convent. However, my conscience has given me no peace, and despite amusements, I am always unhappy. After a lengthy conversation, she was completely changed and told me that she would immediately take steps to enter a convent. She asked me to pray for her, and I felt that God would be generous with her, with his grace. That morning I arrived in Warsaw, and at eight o'clock that evening I was already at home. What a joy it was for my parents and for the whole family. It is difficult to describe it. My mother's health had improved a bit, but the doctors gave no hope of complete recovery. After greeting each other, we knelt down to thank God for the grace of being able to be together once again in this life. When I saw how my father prayed, I was very much ashamed that, after so many years in the convent, I was not able to pray with such sincerity and fervor, and so I never ceased thanking God for such parents. Oh, how everything had changed beyond recognition during those ten years. The garden had been so small, and now I could not recognize it. My brothers and sisters had still been children, and now they were all grown up. I was surprised that I did not find them as they had been when we parted. Stanley accompanied me to church every day. I felt that he was very pleasing to God. St. Faustina is given permission to visit her mother, who is apparently dying. She had a long trip from Vilnius to her family home, uh, which was a small house on a dirt road in western Poland. I had a chance to visit her family home and the nearby parish where Jesus appeared to her at least once. Father Serafim Mihalenko told the story that when she was young, St. Faustina had to share her Sunday dress with two of her sisters, so she would only go to Sunday Mass every third Sunday when she could wear the dress. And on the Sundays in between, she would go in the backyard, 
face the church during Mass and unite herself spiritually with the Holy Mass. Even as a young girl, she was very pious. Along the way to visiting her mother, St. Faustina interceded for a laywoman who was traveling in the same carriage as her on the train, and Faustina saved her religious vocation. Jesus gave Faustina the grace of reading the soul of the woman in order to know what to say to her. Faustina is joyful at seeing her family. Her siblings are grown up, and she is touched by the piety and faith of her father. Faustina's family didn't want to enter, want her to enter the convent initially, but they were good Catholics, and surely they could see God's will for St. Faustina at that point. Parents want what is best for their children, but it's important to pray and to leave room for God's will to be done in the lives of their children. This passage brings to mind uh, some personal events in my own life. My own mother, when she was dying, uh, was hoping that I would be able to come home and visit, and I had the chance to do so, and obviously she had been waiting because she did die four days after I arrived. Also, my aunt was a poor Clare nun, and she was unable, uh, because of her religious rule, to uh, come to her uh, mother's funeral, and that was very difficult for the family to understand. But when we make that offering of ourselves to God, He wants us to give ourselves to Him completely. Thank you.